Hi, Kathy. My name is Koketo from Doxadere Edendale. I need your assistance with a question on evolution. And I'm so glad that you sent it in. All right, it says the diagram below shows the upper jaw, the skull, okay? Remember the skull is the cranium and the facial bones, the pelvic girdle of the modern human, which is Homo sapiens, is us, and African ape. The diagrams are not drawn to scale. Okay, so what do we have here? Here's the pelvic girdle. We got the skull. It's the bottom view. But the skull, remember, the skull doesn't include the, the, uh, the, the lower jaw. We've got the upper jaw. So organism A is your modern human. Or the proper name is Homo sapiens. Us, little guys, hey? And here we have our African ape. Okay apes. Look at the upper jaw, nice round C-shaped curve. Here we have a very rectangular shape, huge canines, but no very small canines there. Foramen magnum's in the middle, so this means that it is perfect for bipedalism. And this one is at the back, so it's going to be for quadrupedalism. Okay? The pelvic girdle, if you look at this pelvic girdle, it's shorter and wider than this one, which is longer and narrower. Okay, now think about it. When you are carrying all this upper body weight, okay, um, on the pelvic bone it, or the pelvic girdle, it has to be sturdy and squarer and wider to carry all this weight. Whereas if you look at the, <clears throat> the one for the African ape, it's narrower and, and longer because all the weight is being carried by the abdomen, okay, and the muscles of the abdomen, and not so much the, the, here on the pelvic girdle. Pelvic girdle is not carrying the body weight. Here it is because this is upright and this is forward like this, okay, so because it's on all fours. Okay, I'm not an artist, but you'll have an idea of what I'm trying to show you here. Okay, so there's the pelvic girdle. There's no pressure on it. Right. As you can see, I didn't do art at school, hey? Maybe I should go and take some art lessons. All right, which organism has a pelvic girdle for bipedalism? Oh, well, hello. It's going to be A. We've just spoken about that. So, organism A. Then, oh, explain your answer. Easy enough. Um, the pelvis is... Shorter and wider to carry the upper body weight. Whereas if an organism is on all fours, they're not carrying that upper body weight. Okay, tabulate three, three visible differences between the upper jaw of organism A and B. Okay, first thing you're going to have to do is they say tabulate. So we have to draw a table because that is going to give you an extra mark. So we draw a little table. Okay, we want that extra mark. We don't want to throw it away. So we're going to say this one is going to be A. This is our... Um, what did they call us? Modern human. Mm, yeah, modern human. So, modern human. Oh, we can also write their Homo sapiens. Okay. And then B is our African ape. All right, so what are we going to do? We're going to look at our teeth, okay? We're going to look at that upper jaw. And the first thing we're going to see, we're going to see that, what do we have here? We have a rounder C-shaped jaw, and we have a rectangular U-shaped jaw. So let's put that first. Rounder C-shaped 
jaw. And this is a rectangular U-shaped jaw. But you should know all of these off by heart anyway. But we're going to see what we can see because this is where you get your marks. Okay, number two, large canines and spaces between the teeth. Canines are much smaller and you can't see the spaces, so very small spaces here. We know we have spaces because we are able to floss between our teeth. But you shouldn't have gaps between your teeth. All right, so rounder C-shaped jaw. Here we have um, small canines. Here we have large canines. Okay, the other thing we saw was um, small spaces between teeth. And what did we see on that side? We had large spaces between teeth. Okay, what else can we see? So we go back to the jaws. Okay, there's this jaw. And here's this one. And remember, we can also look here. So what can we see here? Here we have this jutting out. And this jutting out means that it has prognathus. Whereas with humans, there is no prognathus. So here, no protruding jaw. Or no prognathus. Prognathus means protruding. But I'm worried that they're going to ask you about prognathus and then you don't know what it is. And here... <coughs> The jaw shows protrusion, or it protrudes, and or you can say it shows prognathus. Okay, how's that? I mean, how easy? Because all of these things you can see here. Rounder curve, gentle shape, no gaps, small canines. Um, sticks out, doesn't stick out. I mean, easy peasy. Right, next question coming up. And it says, explain the significance of bipedalism for the hominids. So what are the advantages or the significance of being able to walk on two legs? Well, that's easy. Number one, look here. You've got your African apes who are on all fours, okay? Now you've got the humans who are now upright. Okay, so they are taller. They can view their environment better. They can see, they can spot food. They can spot predators because they are upright. But what else? You're not on the ground with your doing this and running and swinging and doing all those things. You've got your arms available to hold a baby, to carry food, to use tools. So those will be the advantages of bipedalism. So let's do this. Um, we we'll say hands are free to carry babies, okay, um, food, use tools, all right. Secondly, um, taller, so a better view of the environment to spot food and um, avoid, because you want to avoid predators. You know, you've got a lion running around or a cheetah or something like that. You want to make sure you're out of their way. And then the last one I can think of is um, increased surface area for cooling. Okay. Um, why? Because look here. When you're all like this, the body's over, this part is not exposed to the air. And if it's exposed to the air, you can have an increased surface area for cooling and sweating. So that's all I can think of. If you guys can think of something else, 
message it to us and let me know. But that was about where I could go. That's so increased surface area for cooling. Um, also remember, I mean, here they could also have said to you, what are the common characteristics between an African ape and a human? And you must know them. All right. Put it on a table, put it behind the toilet door, put it on the fridge. And you have to read through it before you can leave the room. Okay. People, have an awesome, awesome, awesome week. Remember to download your Tenfold Education app. It's got maths, it's got science, and it will help you. It's been specifically done for you so that you can do well at the end of the year. And that's why we're here. We want to help you. Have an awesome week. Put in the hours. Study. Because it's the only way. If you put in the hours, put that cell phone off, ignore it, and go and do it. So... I just want to say goodbye, be safe, and to my awesome team, thank you guys, you are amazing, I love you all to bits, and have a wonderful week, and I'll see you next Wednesday, same time, same place. Cheers guys.